Hey, welcome back to Dan's Chess Lounge, everyone. I'm super excited about today's round. We have round number 10, uh, so maybe the final round, depending on what happens, of the Gibraltar Masters. You have the number one seed, Levon Aronian, going up against Hikaru Nakamura, our super tactician GM. Uh, Aronian started off kind of iffy, kind of shaky. Uh, while Hikaru was just killing everybody in the beginning. And then all of a sudden, Hikaru started drawing everyone. He's even had like four or five draws in, uh, in a row. So he, he let the field catch him. So now he's got to battle it out with uh, the number one seed, Levon Aronian. So let's see what happens in the game. Aronian was white. He played D4, D6. E4, G6. No, so now you have like a pierce defense that they're transposing into. Knight F6, Knight C3. So this is just like main line of the classical variation of the pierce defense. The pierce defense reminds me of a King's Indian defense uh, because the setup is, is very similar for black and the idea is pretty similar too for for, for black. Uh except for he doesn't have that c4 pawn to attack uh, for white. But it, it's pretty similar, though. Now you have d5, uh, hits the knight. Knight goes back to b8. Uh, this, is a, this is a pretty uh, advanced maneuver because black knows that d5 is a potential move, but he doesn't mind it, though, because he's going to just reroute the knight to a better square. The knight is going to come to either d7 or a6. And then the whole thing behind the whole in inducing white to play d5 is that black is saying, hey, man, your, your pawn is not that great on d5. It actually helps me out because now my bishop has a beautiful, if I can draw it correctly here. Hold on. There we go. My bishop has a beautiful scope here on a long diagonal that that's opened up now. And now black can also chip away at, at the white center with C6 and E6. So um, it's two different takes when a white has their take, black has their take. That's what chess is, is a battle of ideas and you see who's going to prevail. So you have queen D2. Uh, setting up white's battery so he can play bishop to h6 and exchange the dark square bish bishop off. c6. Black wants to break up to center. Bishop e2. Castles. Castles. C takes d. E takes d. Now you have b6. This is giving uh, more scope for the bishop. The bishop may not want to... The bishop may not want to play out on this diagonal here. So the bishop may either go to b7 or go to a6. Now you have bishop a6 uh, wanting to exchange the, the dark square bishop. And then that would that would make uh, black a little weak on the dark squares over here. Only if white can exploit them though. Knight d4. And Hikaru played a6 in the game, uh, keeping an eye and protecting that b b5 square from the knights invading. But there is a pawn right here, right? And then you have the knight and the bishop on that one pawn there. And it's only protected by the knight on c3. So you may be wondering how come... Nakamura didn't just swap off that pawn there, take that pawn. Well, if he if he would have did, if he would have played knight takes d, then he would have ran right into bishop f3, and that pins the knight to the bishop there. And it's just a long list of of bad things that can happen. I'm not gonna go through every single one. It's like ten different variations, and they're all bad for black. <laughs> so uh, that's why he didn't play. Knight takes D there. 
He played a6. Good prophylactic move to keep the knights and bishops off of b b5. So then you have a4. Might be the d7. That's that reroute that we were talking about earlier. Getting the knights to a better square. F4. Now you have b5. This here is a pawn sacrifice that Naka uh, wanted to do so he could create some more space and activity for his pieces. That's one of the problems that Black has in, this, in these type of positions. That they don't have that much space and their pieces kind of fall all over the place. Uh, they run into each other. Just look at the two knights there. The knight on F and the knight on D. You know, they're they're both kind of like running behind each other pretty much. Uh, they're getting in each other's way. So he's just trying to create some more space here. You have exchanges. Uh, Levon Aronian accepts the sacrifice. Now you have knight takes D, knight takes, bishop takes. And now you have C4 hitting the pawn. Uh, at this point here, Naka dropped the bishop back to b7. But I just want to go back and say that in a post-round interview, he he said that he wanted to swap off uh, a pair of the rooks here. He wanted to play rook takes rook, but he simply forgot. Uh, it's hard to imagine that someone ranked that high would just simply forget uh, about, about their plan. Uh, especially when they're right in the mix of, of the battle, but it just shows that everyone's human, you know, that these guys are computers, they're on engines, you know, they miss things too, just like everyone else. So then, uh, Aronian capitalizes on that and he plays rook to e1 there, putting pressure on that e1, e7 square, and keeping his rooks in the game. King drops back to g8. Because uh, it could be some funny funny tricks there, funny tactics coming up. Not now, but maybe coming up. He's on that exposed diagonal. You may have knight checks coming up. You can see something like queen coming here. Then you have like knight checks here or knight checks there. So uh, Hakara goes ahead and gets the king off of that uh, exposed diagonal. Now you have an exchange here on d7. Aronian is marching forward, trying to, to break up the king side, the exposed king side there, uh, since he don't have, have any dark, dark square weaknesses, and he doesn't have his dark square bishop. Queen c7 here. Now you have uh, the rook left, and that was another reason for the, the rook f5 move, is so that white can go ahead and get the rook lift coming. Uh, you know, you will see things like Rook comes over to h4, followed by the queen, you know, to uh, h6. You see this a lot in, in just beginner chess, to be quite frankly. Now you have queen b6. It, it pins the knight, which is critical. Rook h4. h5 to stop queen the queen from coming in there. To h6 uh, with that battery, with that queen and rook battery, that would have been devastating. Uh, but white is better here. White has nice initiative, a nice attack. He just needs to improve his position. You know, he's got f take g threats. He's got rook takes e threats. He's got queen h6 threats. You know, followed up by. All types, maybe G4. I mean, he's just, White has all types of threats going on here. He's definitely in a, in a more attacking, uh, in a better position. So he plays this crazy move here. Rook takes H5, which is a little impatient here because the follow-up isn't quite there. So Nakamura accepts the sacrifice, and then Queen G5 is on the board. That's what he played. Check. The whole idea here is to get a rook coming down, a rook lift this way, like this, or excuse me, not like that, like this here, and then come on over like this. That's Aronian's idea here behind his sack. So now you have queen h5, 
the king goes back to g8. Now you have queen g4, which protects the knight that was under attack by the queen. But you got to remember the knight is pinned. It can't go anywhere. It can't help out in its attack. And now you would think, okay, it's time for the rook lift, right? King's in check. King moves to h7. So now you think it's time for the rook lift, right? But there's a problem with the rook lift. The rook lift doesn't work. Can you guys tell me why the rook lift doesn't work? I'll give you three seconds to let me know. Okay, the rook lift doesn't work because rook a1 check. Black has the rook on the A file where he can just check. So the rook lift doesn't work for Aronin. He completely missed that. The king would go to F2. Now you would have queen B2 check. Knight blocks, and then you have queen G7. And after this, Nakamura is actually winning. You know, he don't forget, Aronian sacked out rook to open up the king's position over there. So now... Nakamura will be winning here. So, Aronian completely missed that and missed his calculation. He missed something in his calculations that didn't allow his tactics to, to work like how he thought. So, he just played queen h4, king g8, queen g4, and then it's a draw. The player agreed to a draw. It would have been a, a three fold repetition uh, coming up anyway. So at this point here it was a draw. Uh, the other the other players that was tied for the lead drew as well. So now we're gonna have a four way playoff, a four way playoff uh, to determine the winner. And unfortunately for Nakamura, he has to play MVL, who is also a monster. He's also another beast on the board. Uh, whereas Aronian. Uh, he's paired up against Richard Rapport. And not to say that, that Rapport is not uh, a great player. He's just not on the same level as a MVL, you know, or Aronian or even a Nakamura. So uh, Nakamura kind of got a tough draw here coming up in the playoff. But uh, stay tuned for my next video. I'm going to go over the playoffs and go over the eventual... Uh, game to that determine the the winner of the championship so be on the lookout for that i hope you enjoyed the video don't forget to like comment and subscribe until next time